Hey everybody, my name is Chris from ProjectOption.com and in today's video we're going to be focusing on short straddles. So more specifically in this video we're going to talk about how short straddles have historically performed when implemented on the S&P 500 ETF since 2007. And then we're also going to talk about how using stop losses and profit targets have historically improved or decreased the strategy's performance over time. So just as a quick recap, if you're not familiar with short straddles, the short straddle is an option strategy that consists of selling an at-the-money call option and an at-the-money put option in the same expiration cycle. Now you can sell a straddle that does not use the at-the-money strike price, but selling an at-the-money straddle is the most common approach. Now the risk profile graph at expiration for a short straddle position looks exactly like the following image. So the maximum profit potential is going to be at the strike price of the straddle, and as you get away from the straddle's strike price, the profits will decrease, and if the stock price moves far enough away from the straddle's strike price, the strategy begins to lose money. And since there are only short options in this strategy, a short straddle is a high-risk strategy with um, theoretically unlimited loss potential. Now, since short straddles have virtually unlimited loss potential, have stop losses historically improved the strategy's performance when implemented on the S&P 500 ETF, which is the ticker symbol SPY? So let's go ahead and look at the methodology for our first study. So as mentioned before, the product we're looking at is the S&P 500 ETF, which is the ticker symbol SPY. And the expiration that we're going to be targeting for these short straddles is the standard monthly expiration cycle closest to 60 days to expiration. Now to set up our straddle, we're going to sell an at-the-money call and put option, which means we're going to sell the calls and puts with the strike price closest to the current stock price. Now we're going to sell only one straddle per trade in all of these studies. Now we're going to look at the results for not managing the straddles, so holding them to expiration, and we're going to compare that to taking losses at a 50%, 100%, and 150% loss on the premium received, which we'll go over in just a second. Now all the trades are entered after the subsequent trades were closed. So as soon as we take one trade off, a new trade is going on the following trading day. So just to show you how the strategies would be set up in real life using real trading software, I'm going to show you how the strategy would be set up in the Tastyworks trading platform. So right now I have SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, and I have that trade page pulled up. But we have a bunch of different expiration cycles here, so I'm gonna filter out and just choose the regular expiration cycles because in this study we're only targeting standard expiration cycles and that's how I would trade in real life. So that's what we're going to do in our study. So as we see here, we have different expirations with different numbers of days until they expire. So we're going to be targeting the one closest to 60 days, which in this case is the 65 day expiration cycle, which is June of 2018. Now SPY is currently at 266.45, which means we're going to sell the 266 straddle. So all we have to do to do that is click on the bid on the 266 put, and then click on the bid on the 266 call as well, and that would create our 266 straddle in the expiration with 65 days to go. Now if you want to learn more about Tastyworks and see their highly competitive commission rates, Go ahead and click on the link in the description or comment section after this video and you'll be brought to a page where you can see if they'd be a good fit for you. Alright, so before showing you the results of the study, I want to make sure that you understand how the loss calculations are being made. So let's say we sell a straddle for $10. Now if you sell a straddle for $10, a 50% loss in the premium received would occur when the straddle price increases by 50% to $15. Now, a 100% loss in the premium received would occur if the straddle price increased by 100% to $20. And finally, a 150% loss in the premium received would occur if the straddle price increases by 150% to $25. So let's go ahead and see what the historical performance was when using these stop loss levels. Okay, so on this graph, we're looking at the cumulative profit and loss of all four strategies. So we're comparing three different stop loss levels to just holding to expiration. Now what we find here is that compared to holding to expiration, which means not managing the trades at all, implementing a stop loss that was not too tight helped smooth out the strategy's returns. So the tightest stop loss being a 50% uh, loss on the premium received, that had the choppiest returns and didn't really have great results over the long term. And in my opinion, that's because the trade just didn't really have that much room to move. Now, when you look at the strategies where the stop losses were a little bit larger, so the 100% stop loss and the 150% stop loss, we can see that the trades had much smoother results over time, 
and that's because in my opinion, the trades had more room to move without getting stopped out. But at the same time, those extremely large losses were cut short. Now keep in mind that since these trades were not closed at the same time, the entry dates are also different with all the approaches. So that explains why some of the curves do not have a 100% correlation to each other throughout the entire period. So overall, all of the strategies had right around a 60% success rate, but the lowest success rate strategy was managing losses at a 50% loss on the premium received, which makes sense because that's the tightest stop loss. Now, if you're wondering how the 100% stop loss level had a slightly higher win rate than holding to expiration, it's because by managing losses, there were slightly more trades. There were a couple more occurrences, and it just so turned out that the overall success rate on all of those occurrences was just slightly higher than holding to expiration. Now, when we look at the median profit and loss of all the trades that were closed, we see that holding to expiration had a median closing P&L of about 25%. So that means 25% of the premium received, which means the median P&L, if we sold the straddle for $10, was that the straddle expired worth $7.50, which would represent a 25% profit on the premium received. Now the best performing category was to take losses at 100% of the premium received, which basically means the straddle doubles from the price of entry. So if you sold the straddle for $10, a 100% loss in the premium received would occur if the straddle price traded up to $20. Now that approach had the highest median closing P&L of 35% of the premium received, which tells me that the stop loss was good enough to avoid those extremely large losses, such as the one seen in 2008, 2015 and potentially 2018, but it was not such a tight stop loss that interfered with the strategy's performance. Now another metric I like to look at is the 5th percentile P&L, which is the P&L that was only exceeded during 5% of the trading days over the entire period of the study. So in the case of not managing the short straddles and just holding them to expiration, the 5th percentile P&L was a 65% loss on the premium received, which means on 95% of the trading days over the study, the P&L was not as severe as a 65% loss on the premium received. Now on the other hand, the worst P&L experienced does tell us the lowest P&L that was experienced out of all the trading days over the course of the study. So in the case of holding the straddles to expiration, the worst P&L experience was nearly a 300% loss in the premium received, which means that the straddle price nearly quadrupled from the price that we collected at the time of entering the trade. And as expected, implementing stop losses significantly reduced that worst P&L experienced, but as you'll notice, a lot of those worst P&Ls are more than the stop losses that we set. And that's because we use closing data in the studies and therefore some of the losses got more severe than our stop losses over the course of that trading day. And when the trades were finally closed at the closing bell, the losses were much more significant than the stop losses. So that's just one of the limitations of doing back tests using end of day data. Now these results also demonstrate why I do not like tight stop losses. And that's that the stop losses can get exceeded very quickly when you have a tight stop loss. So in the case of the 50% stop loss, we see that the worst P&L experienced was almost 100%, which is almost twice the stop loss that we initially set. Whereas in the case of the 100% stop loss, the worst loss is 150%, which is only 1.5 times the stop loss, which is still significant, but not as significant as a two times multiplier on the stop loss that we wanted. And finally, we're looking at the percent of trades that reach each stop loss level. So in this case, 32% of all of the straddle trades reach the 50% stop loss level, but only around 10% of the trades reach the 100% and 150% stop loss levels. Now that's pretty interesting because that tells us that of the trades that reached a 100% loss in the premium received, most of those trades also reached 150% losses on the premium received. By the way, if you're brand new to the channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and go ahead and click the bell so you get notifications every time we release a new options trading video. So now that we've explored just managing losses when selling straddles on the S&P 500, let's investigate the historical results of short straddles on SPY and compare closing trades at various profit targets. Now we're going to use the same study methodology as before. So we're looking at the S&P 500 ETF, which is SPY, and we're going to sell the at the money straddle in the expiration cycle nearest to 60 days to expiration. Now in terms of management, we're going to look at holding to expiration or no management, and we're going to compare that to managing profits at 
25%, and 50% of the premium received. So let's go over what that means right now. So since we're selling straddles, the profits occur when the straddle price decreases below the point of sale. So if we collect $10 on a straddle, 10% profits would occur when the straddle price decreases by 10% to $9. And a 25% profit would occur when the straddle price decreases by 25% to $7.50. So that's a 25% price decrease from the initial entry price of $10. Now these results were surprising because they showed that managing profits at 10% of the premium received had the smoothest growth curve over time. And it's pretty much straight up from mid-2011 all the way to you know, the end of 2017. Now 25% profits also performed very well, but the results were not as consistent as managing profits at 10% of the premium received. Now taking profits at 50% of the premium received pretty much behaved exactly like holding to expiration. And that's because a lot of short straddle positions will not get to the 50% profit target. And if they do, it's going to be in the final days right before expiration because at the money options have the most decay right before they expire. Now, I usually am a big believer in letting profits run and not taking profits too soon because when you have a lot of small profits and you let your losses run, you need an extremely high success rate to be profitable over time. And I think that's a dangerous game to play. But in the case of straddles, since they rarely get to those high profit percentages, I can definitely see the case for managing profits a lot sooner. And let's also talk about some of the benefits of managing profits sooner and why it makes sense. So here are some of the benefits of taking profits sooner on a short straddle on the S&P 500. So first of all, you're going to reset the strike price higher during steadily rising markets. Now, this is important because it results in more neutralized deltas over time and reduces the probability of losses from market increases. So if you sell a straddle and the market increases, your position will become bearish because you want the market to stay right around your straddle strike price. And if you sell a straddle and the market decreases, your position will become more and more bullish because you want the market to stay right around your straddle strike price. So by closing short straddle positions at smaller profit targets, that means you'll be selling new straddles and those new straddles will have strike prices closer to the current market price and that reduces the probability of losing money by holding a short straddle and watching the market rip higher. Now another benefit of closing trades sooner is that you'll reduce the P&L volatility by avoiding the high gamma exposure that short straddles have close to expiration. So if you're short a straddle, with five days to expiration and the stock price is fluctuating above and below your strike price, the P&L of your position is going to fluctuate wildly because the directional exposure of that short straddle is going to be changing very quickly. Now this last benefit is less pronounced and probably not thought of by many, but having a high percentage of profitable trades can be extremely beneficial from a psychological standpoint because a lot of traders feel good about booking profitable trades and by having a high percentage of profitable trades, you're more likely to stick to a strategy long term compared to a strategy where you might have, let's say, a 30% rate of success. All right, so it's not all good news, so let's talk about the cons of taking profits sooner on a short straddle. All right, so the first benefit is also a con because resetting the strike price higher during steadily rising markets means that subsequent drops in the market may lead to larger losses because the straddle's delta will grow positive more quickly due to the higher strike price and higher strike price relative to holding longer and potentially having a straddle with a strike price below the market. And of course, if you're taking profits sooner, that means you're taking trades off sooner, which also means you're putting on more trades. And of course, that means you're also paying more in commissions. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, Tastyworks is a really awesome brokerage service and they have amazing commission rates. So go ahead and check out that page in the description to see if you could potentially save some money by trading with them. And lastly, taking profits sooner means you have a higher required success rate because one large loss can wipe out profits from many small profit trades. Now when we look at the success rates and the median days held of all these approaches, we can see that the success rate of just holding the expiration was 60% and the median days held was 60, which makes sense since we're targeting 60 day expiration cycles. Now when you manage at 10% profits, the success rate jumps up dramatically to 93% and you're only holding trades for 14 days. And as we'd expect by using larger profit targets such as 25% and 50%, the success rate tapers off compared to managing at 10% and you also hold the trades for longer on average. 
Now when holding to expiration, the median P&L was right around 25% of the premium received. And when using profit targets, the median closing P&L was right around that profit target amount. Now the fifth percentile P&L was pretty consistent across all of the management strategies. And once again, the fifth percentile P&L is the P&L that was reached only 5% of the time over all of the trading days over the period. Now, interestingly, when we look at the worst P&L experienced across all of the management strategies, we see a pretty notable increase in the worst P&L experienced in the profit target management categories. Now, interestingly, when we look at the worst P&L experienced in all of the management categories, we see a pretty substantial jump in the worst P&L experienced when we start introducing the profit target. Now this makes complete sense to me because what I said a couple slides ago is that if you manage profits sooner, your straddled strike price is going to be more often closer to the current market price. Now, if you keep resetting your straddled strike price higher as you're managing profitable trades, when the market finally does reverse and decline, your straddled strike price is going to be higher than it would have been if you did not manage profits. And in that case, your position is going to become much more bullish and have positive deltas that are much larger compared to if you held the straddle for longer and perhaps had a straddle with a strike price that was below the market price before that crash occurred. Now I know that can be pretty confusing, so please drop a comment down below if you need further clarification. Now I wanted to show the results for profit and loss management together, but I didn't want this video to get too long, so go ahead and click on the link on this page if you want to watch the next video, which looks at short straddle results when managing profits and losses in the same trade. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Once again, I'm Chris from ProjectOption.com, and I'll see you in the next video.